Let's talk. Top five reasons being in a band is awesome. So last week I made a video called Top 5 Worst Things About Being in a Band. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But let's be honest, that video was a bit of a gripe fest and I really didn't touch on the points about why being in a band is actually great. So today, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you the counterpoints. Why should you be in a band? Number one, being in a band makes you feel amazing. In a world where you often feel small and insignificant, being in a band makes you feel like a larger than life rock star. Yeah, maybe I'm being a little bit narcissistic, but when you're in a band, no matter how small the band, no matter how limited your success, you honestly feel like a rock star. And people kind of treat you like that too. Now, don't let it go to your head because in real life, you're not. But really, it's an amazing thing to experience and everybody should have their 15 minutes of fame once. When you start a band, you kind of have to fake it till you make it. You pay money to have press shots done like this one. You know, you put out all your promotional materials. You act like you are a big band. And in your mind, you start to believe it too. And you know, it's kind of a cool feeling. We had posters done, we had business cards done. You could hand those to people and go, yeah, yeah, this is us. You really feel like you're living that dream. And that's an amazing thing. No matter how small and how limited your success is, when you get on that stage and you stand in front of your Marshall half stack with your Les Paul, people are excited for just a moment. You are a rock star. Sure, it's kind of not true. And sure, your band really isn't that big. But that feeling, just to experience that once, it's awesome. Number two, you get to hear your music come to life. This is especially true for songwriters. When you're writing your song, you record your demo with your guitar and you know, you listen to it back on your phone and you have all these dreams and all these ideas for what the song could sound like. But when you get together with your band and you hear that drum part for the first time, and you hear that bass part, well, maybe not the bass part, but you hear those other parts. I'm kidding, bass players, we love you. But when you hear those other parts come together, it's just mind blowing, especially if you go to the studio and you record the first time you get to hear those rough mixes back and you listen to those in your car with your bandmates, you are just sucked into another universe for a moment where you hear what you could be and Wow, that's amazing. And the great part is you get to keep those recordings. You know, you go and record your music and I can go and listen back to my music now. Every few years I can take out that recording, listen to it and go, wow, for just a moment in my life, I did something that I'm really proud of. Number three, connecting with your fans. If you're in a band for a while and you work to build a following, you do eventually attract fans, people that are not your friends, people that hear your music and it means something to them. And it's hard to explain how it feels when you create something that comes from your heart and it touches somebody else's heart in some way. That connection is a very strange and wonderful thing. And I don't think that I can explain it to you. You just have to go out and experience it. And I hope that all of you, if you write music, get to share it with people that really deeply appreciate it and that you get to have that feeling that I'm talking about. There's no better feeling in the world than standing on stage in front of your fans who are reaching out to you and you know kids are reaching up on the stage and grabbing your set list to have it as a souvenir and you know you throw your guitar pick into the crowd and people dive for it. It's an amazing feeling and maybe that goes back to feeling like a rock star, I don't know. But connecting with your fans is really one of my favorite parts about that experience of being in a band. Number four rubbing elbows with other musicians. This is one thing I almost forgot about until I heard that Peter Tork from The Monkees had died. Now, if you don't know who Peter Tork is, he's a pretty famous musician because he played in a band called The Monkees. They were really, really big in the 1960s. And as soon as I heard that he'd passed away, I immediately went back to a place in my life where I remembered opening for Peter Tork and I remember playing that show and in between our sets having a chance to talk to him. And you know, it was just really cool 
to be able to say, yeah, I met him, we hung out, and we talked. And I have that experience with so many musicians. I got to meet people that I looked up to, and we got to, you know, really have a, a chat as musician to musician. And that's an amazing experience. It's really cool to get to peek inside that world. When we recorded one of our albums, we actually went to the house. Yes, a house on a little road in Maryland that you would never think twice as you passed by. Inside that house was an absolutely state-of-the-art music studio that was run by this famous producer out in California. But periodically he comes back to the East Coast and records things with bands over here. Why? I don't know but that's how it is. I remember recording in that studio and thinking, wow, this is where this band that I love recorded. Or wow, this is where that band that I love recorded. I'm standing in the same vocal booth. It's really an interesting feeling to be this far removed from incredible success like that and yet also be so far away. I remember on the walls they had like platinum records and gold records of bands that I had heard of and I'm like wow they were all standing right here doing exactly what I'm doing. And you know it's pretty cool to be able to look back at that and go yeah you know what's above that dentist's office? A recording studio where such and such recorded or yeah you know what's in that little house over there? A music studio that nobody knows about. I also got to work with some great producers too and this one producer he produced a record that I really liked and there's this one song where the guy laughs in the middle of the song and I always thought whose idea was that? Why did they do that? It seems like such a strange choice. And so I asked him, hey, who came up with that? You know, it sounds small, but when I listen back to the song, I know why they did that and whose idea it was. It's interesting the inside things that you learn just by chatting with them. Now there's this one guy that interestingly he would never let us take a picture with him because he didn't want his face showing but he works with all kinds of bands that I was a big fan of and so I was able to ask him some questions in between recording our songs like hey why did you do this on this one album why did you do that on that one album and also while we were recording he mentioned that he actually had a big beef with this other band and we were actually going to be opening for them in a few months and he said oh yeah mention my name to them see how they react what's funny is I did mention his name to them and and you should have seen the look on their face. Turns out he had recorded their demo for them for free and expected to be called back to record their actual record when they got their deal and they decided to just kind of walk off and go with another producer. So not so cool. It's all these little inside things that are just fascinating to learn about and you really don't get unless you are in that scene and working in that environment. Number five, chasing that dream with your best friends. Whoever you're in a band with, they will become your best friends. You spend all your time together, you're chasing a common dream together. Yeah, it's a pipe dream. Yeah, it's far away and you know you may never get there, but you're doing it together. You'll get closer with them than you have with your other guy friends. You'll get closer with them than some of your girlfriends. Trust me, these guys will be your closest, dearest friends. Honestly, the closest that I can describe it is it's like dating somebody, but there's three other guys that you're dating, but you're not dating. Really, it's incredibly close, and that's why when bands break up, it's often awkward, like, you know, when you break up with a girlfriend, like, you know, if you see that other band member that you broke up with, you don't really try to look at them. In my last video that I made, I talked about all the bad things about being in a band, and when you go through all those bad things together, it brings you incredibly close. You're all going after that common dream together, you're all pursuing the same goal, and, you know, it's a pipe dream. It's nowhere close but you have faith and you believe in each other and hopefully if you break up, you break up on good terms and you can stay friends with them. I'm still friends with my band members and they're some of the closest friends that I have. Like me, I was in a band with a bunch of other young guys and we just messed around and played pranks on each other all the time. We'd, you know, get in the car, go down to Virginia to play a show, stop at the 7-Eleven, eat some awful food, get out of the car, lug all our gear on stage, play the show, you know, and then do it all over again. You know, when I put it like that, it sounds like a lot of time spent just lugging heavy gear and driving places, but it's hard to describe how much fun it really was. And those memories, they stay with you forever. So that's it. That was my top five awesome things about being in a band. Now, if you didn't see my first video about the top five worst things about being in a band, go and check that out right now. Please, leave me a comment. Let me know. 
What's your experience with being in a band? Did you experience the same things? Did you have a different experience? Leave that below, let me know. See you later, bye.